Ikaw, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are celebrating the Ascension of the Lord. The first reading gives us St. Luke's description of the event in the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus was taken up in a cloud, taken from the sight of His disciples. Then, in the second reading, St. Paul tells the Ephesians that the Father seated Jesus at His right hand. In the Gospel, Jesus commissioned His disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. He instructed them, promising them, I am with you always until the end of the age. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord. up 
upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of Him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to His call, what are the riches of glory in His inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of His power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of His great might, which He worked in Christ, raising Him from the dead, and seating Him at His right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The Word of the Lord. Continuing Mission at Ascension. This is Ascension Sunday, and uh, we realize and should again be clarified that the ascension of the Lord Jesus into heaven is part of the Easter, the resurrection mystery. In fact, we can even say that the resurrection is already the event of Jesus' entry into the realm of God. But in our liturgical uh, and uh, time-bound experience and celebration, we separate them, not in order to put them you know, uh, uh, far apart from each other, but in order for us to focus on each aspect of this grand mystery called Easter, the Resurrection. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, which is St. Luke's version, at least one of his two versions, of the Ascension. The risen Lord appears to the disciples. And look at how the risen Lord continues to be a missionary after his resurrection. Let us not think that Jesus did his mission only when he was still living here on earth before his passion and death. In the resurrection, after the resurrection, he became more of a missionary. He appeared to his disciples. He continued teaching them. He continued guiding them. He even uh, uh, instructed them to stay in Jerusalem wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. He prepared them for mission. He already told them that from Jerusalem, after the gift of the Holy Spirit, they would go to the ends of the earth in order to be His witnesses. So the risen Lord, victorious, was very busy <laughs> He continued his mission, 
with the disciples. And then according to St. Luke, you know, one day near the mountain, as he was talking with them, he was lifted up to heaven in a cloud and he disappeared from their sight. A beautiful image of how someone who now totally belongs to God is now enveloped by a cloud, a sign, a symbol of divine presence. And they could not see him anymore the way we see another human being. It is another sight that is needed. The eyes of faith, the eyes of faith. And the angels reminded them, hey, go back to your work. The one who ascended to God now asks you to be his witnesses. The risen Lord continued his mission, and now his disciples must be missionaries. In the second reading, St. Paul tells the Ephesians that Jesus, the risen one, who ascends to the Father, is seated at the right hand of the Father. The right hand meaning a place of honor, of authority, of power, of dominion. All of that is given to Jesus. The one who was rejected, the one who was humiliated and put to death, he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And there, he is constituted the head of the church, the body, the church. So there in heaven, Jesus continues working, continues his mission as head of the church, guiding the church. And, and in the letter to the Hebrews, we are told that there, seated at the right hand of the Father, Jesus continues to be our high priest, our intercessor. He continues praying for us. He continues whispering to the Father our names, our needs. He has not forgotten us. Seated at the right hand of the Father, He brings our weaknesses, our temptations, our pains. The ascension and the glorification of Jesus does not mean for him forgetfulness of the pains of humanity. He is the head of the church. He is our high priest. He is our intercession. A mission that is eternal. The ascension is about perennial and eternal mission. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw Him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to Me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord Continuing Mission at Ascension So we are reflecting on this very important aspect of the resurrection of Jesus, His glorification, which we call ascension. So now we have a brother named Jesus whose humanity, whose body has been glorified. And, uh, 
And this human body is now in the presence of God, right there with God. And in the first reading, we see how after the resurrection, Jesus did not go on vacation, resting. No, he continued his mission, preparing the disciples for their mission. And in the second reading, St. Paul tells the Ephesians that constituted as a Lord and Messiah, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, enjoying all power and uh, authority, dominion as head of the church. And he continues his mission of praying for us, interceding for us. So being close to God, entering the realm of God, does not mean forgetting the world and forgetting brothers and sisters. No. There is an eternal mission for the eternal high priest seated at the right hand of the Father. The gospel passage for this year comes from St. Matthew. In fact, it is not an account of the ascension. It is just the closing part of the gospel of St. Matthew, where the risen Lord appears to the disciples. The risen Lord. In fact, his opening lines to them, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That means he has already ascended into heaven, according to the second reading. Seated at the right hand of the Father, he already enjoys all of his authority and dominion. So maybe the one who has ascended into heaven continues to visit his disciples and then gathers them now in, on a mountain to declare to them, hey, I am still with you. I am truly seated at the right hand of the Father, but I am with you. I continue. And I want to tell you, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And as the voice of God, he tells his disciples and he tells us what our mission is as his followers, as his body. First is to make disciples of all the nations. We should lead people to follow Jesus. We should introduce people to Jesus. We should let people learn from Jesus, be students of Jesus, be friends of Jesus, and to follow Jesus from all the nations, from all cultures, peoples from all straits and strata of life. We should do that. That's our mission. Of course, it is a grace but we should do our share. Secondly, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptism, which is a sacrament of faith and the sacrament that brings us into the life of God, communion of the Trinity, sharing in divine life. Baptism, not just a ritual, but faith and being part of the very life of God. Then, we should teach people what Jesus had commanded us. So, are we familiar with the teachings of Jesus? Are we familiar with His Word? So, part of our mission, no, for us to be able to comply with our mission is also getting familiar with Jesus' Word and teaching familiarity with the Word of God so that we have something to share. And we'll say, oh wow, what do I get in return? Ah, you know, for those who do their mission well, there is a promise. I will be with you till the end of the age. What Jesus promises is His perjuring, enduring presence. After all, it is his mission that we will do. After all, he is our head in the body called the church. After all, he is the one seated at the right hand of the Father. 
as our high priest and intercessor. So he, he is always with us and we join him in his continuing mission. Today is also World Communications Day. And during this pandemic, we thank the many communicators, especially those engaged in the means of social communication. Today we affirm you, thank you for spreading the word of God, the worship of God, and the values and the hope that we need as a humanity. And we ask you to continue your mission of being bearers of good news, of love, of faith, and hope. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Forty days after he rose from the dead, Jesus was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. He ascended into heaven, and we have his disciples as witnesses. How could we make sense of this event? First, we could look at it as another confirmation of the identity of Jesus as the Son of God. Only the one who came from the Father could return to the Father. Jesus told his disciples. Indeed, he is the word of God, present with God from the beginning, and in time is incarnate in Jesus, in the womb of Mary. With his ascension, the word incarnate in Jesus returns to God with his glorified humanity and is seated at God's right hand. But it is not only for his self-glorification, the Catechism says, Okay, Jesus does not cease thinking of us and our salvation, even if his earthly ministry has ended. Indeed, he continues to intercede for us in the presence of the Father, as our high priest. His ascension into heaven does not mean being distant from us who remain on earth. That is why St. John says in his letter that Jesus is our advocate before the Father. What does this mean? Pope Francis teaches us. How comforting to know that Jesus remembers us, our strengths and weaknesses, and makes them his own, presenting them to the Father, and ensuring the continuous flow of God's mercy and grace for all of us. The ascension of Jesus brings a message of hope. Jesus reminds us that he would continue to pray for us and to beg for us before the Father. He wants us to be with him in heaven one day. There you go, brothers and sisters. Do not lose hope, but continue praying and counting on our intercessor and high priest in heaven, Jesus. Happy feast day.
We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we avoid separating closeness to God from closeness to neighbors? Paano natin maiiwasan na paghiwalayin ang pagiging malapit sa Diyos at pagiging malapit sa kapwa? The second point is, how can we keep the missionary spirit of Jesus alive in our church? Paano natin mapapanatiling buhay ang espiritu ng misyon sa ating simbahan? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always. Your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.